I'm Dave Mercer. I'm Matt Pangrak. And welcome back to The Call, a weekly sport fishing debate show. And can we even say that anymore, Panger? Because it's been a few weeks. We've been I'll on, take um, the hit on this one. I'll take the hit on this one, Dave. I was on a 30-day northern odyssey. I hit three of the Great Lakes. An odyssey? It's an odyssey. So, okay. Like, it's a bad No, one. that's the... I was going to say like Homer, but I thought that was the Iliad. Uh, so it's a bad... <laughs> Wait, didn't wow. Homer go on an odyssey? I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I'm a big Homer Simpson we fan. We need to talk but... about fishing. No, Homer, yeah, like the really... philosopher. Oh, not a Homer Simpson. <laughs> you see, there, there, there's the level of maturity you're dealing with. I went straight. You go Homer. I go straight. There's two I know: Homer Circle and uh, Homer Simpson, obviously. Um, <laughs> but we've been away. You've been fishing, and um, we're back, though. We're back, and it's good uh, to be back, Dave. It's great to be back. It's great to be back on a show that just right away results just how stupid I am. The only homers I know are those homers. But this week, our topic is one that I think some people get riled up about, and it is smallmouth bass tournaments are boring to watch. Keep our call, Panger. This is a tough one because it's been what, five or six years now that the Elite Series has ended on pretty much back-to-back smallmouth fisheries and watching St. Clair, it occurred to me on Saturday that they could have taken Thursday's reel for the first two hours, ran it on Saturday, and no one would have noticed the difference. It was the same people doing the same thing over and over again. But having fished several smallmouth tournaments and watched a lot now, And you know this better than most. There's a lot of nuance in smallmouth tournaments. It's not just the same thing. So I think the educated fans, and I think the fans who are following this, who understand it, I don't think they're boring at all. I think they're even more intriguing because the decision-making and the subtle changes that have to be made, but at surface value, everything looks the same, but it's not. It just doesn't have that immediate, like, for example, you take the two last fisheries you've been to, the one before it, the Sabine River. When somebody caught a big fish, like right away, you knew that mattered. In a small, small term, you could see somebody catch a five pounder and you'd be like, yeah, well, he's still got to get four more fives. I mean, it just, uh, I don't think they're boring, clearly, obviously. I understand where people, I mean, it depends what you're watching a tournament for. I mean, are you watching a tournament to see what the best anglers do? Coast to coast, because that's what we keep hearing. Test these anglers, you know, don't all have the tournaments at one time. Have them at, at different times of the year and test them at different ways of fishing. And to me, that's what's exciting. That's what's exciting about it. And sure, there's the guys who are really good at that. But what's exciting to me is to watch anglers evolve. Like, you look at that St. Clair tournament. Look at one guy that isn't getting talked about a lot that should have been talked about a lot in that tournament is freaking Luke Palmer. I mean, you're talking about a guy that has been on the elite series, I think four or five years now. I literally remember him talking and joking about how he, Gussie taught him how to tie braid to floral. He didn't use spring like last year. And yeah. And, and I'm looking at the deck of his boat as he leaves on championship Sunday. And I'm like, all oh, he's got is spinning rods. That to me is impressive. That to me is the drive. That's the, you're watching somebody who has obviously taken time out of their life to say, not be that guy who says, I don't like this. And I'm just going to have to try to get enough points before we get there. And has realized that this is a major part. And it's not just bass. It's any tour you fish. If you're going to fish at a top level tour, you're going to spend some time around small with bass fisheries. And I get it where somebody says, mm-hmm. it's boring to me because it's not the way I fish. It's not it's not something you may never aspire to go smallmouth bass fishing. You live in Florida. You want to fish for large mouth your whole life. But if you're watching a tournament and in, to me, the cool thing about a tournament is watching how these guys adapt and what they do. I think smallmouth bass tournaments are, are incredibly exciting, but I also get it. It's not like watching somebody fish a frog over a, over a slop pile. I mean, there's a much different visual effect to that, but you ask me, What's the difference between a smallmouth bass tournament on the St. Lawrence River and a ledge tournament on the Tennessee River? That's exactly where I was going with it. And if you go back and look at the numbers of top five finishes since 2013 when the Elite Series started going to the St. Lawrence River, you have over 10 different techniques 
that have been used to win or have top five finishes. I mean, you can name them. It's not just a drop shot and it's rarely a tube. Now the tube is like the forgotten thing up there. It's not guys dragging. You have big spinner baits, spy baits, hair jigs, underspins, Carolina rigs, football jigs, drop shots, Ned rigs, jerk baits. I just named them right there. I mean, I think there's something exciting. I remember, remember when KVD was fighting those five pounders on the spy bait on six pound test line. I think that there are, are key moments in those small mouth tournaments that are just as, if not more exciting than the large mouth tournaments, because you're always in a small mouth tournament on a key fish. You're always on the edge of disaster with the light yeah. line, with the current, with the way the fish is fighting. Most of the time, you know, on a ledge, you set the hook, you winch it in, you boat flip it. It's five seconds. The smallmouth tournament, get the hair on your arm standing up. When you know a guy has a big one, the thing's jumping 50 yards out there. You're always, you know, how much pressure can you put on? Can you not? Is the guy going to back reel? Is he going to feed him? Like, how is how is he going to end up? And then you've got the, the side of the boat with the landing. You don't get any of that with the set, crank, and blow it over the side. So I'm calling that smallmouth bass tournaments are boring to watch. I'm right with you. I'm calling it all day long. I mean, shocker. I love smallmouth bass tournaments, but I, yeah, I so totally I. agree, though. I, I think that if you look at it from a distance, sure, it looks boring. It's some dude you're not seeing exactly what they're fishing. They've got their head down. But if you really pay attention to all the nuances and everything that goes on, it is some of the most intriguing fishing we have all year. So I'm calling it too, but I have a feeling that some folks are going to get ornery in our comments and tell us they're all us. It's good to be back, Dave. Great to be back. And we're, we're, we're going to be back next Monday. So keep coming here every Monday. Let us know what you think. Keep our call.